there's the hummingbird feeder. There we go. There we go. All right. Hello, everyone. I guess I'm a little far away. Let's get this a little closer and not break it. There we go. Hello, hello. Uh, let's see. So I barely got Ina down for her nap before 3.30. Um, yeah, she's... Nap times are just, like, not her favorite thing. Which, you know, that's, like, kind of normal for little kids, right? Little kids hate nap time. Adults wish they could take them. Uh, it's kind of interesting. But she definitely needed a nap. Hi, Cheryl. Um, needed. Needed a nap. Um, that teething, boy, it's just really, it's not sitting well with her. But uh, we're gonna try this 3.30 thing for a while and hopefully it'll work. So today we're doing um, beads and tatting. And then Wednesday we're doing weaving and I'm really hoping that I can get that thing done. Um, but I've been cleaning my house today because it needed a deep clean and it's you know kind of the end of spring so I better get it done. Um, so that has to happen. And I have a friend coming to visit um, over the weekend, and then I will be vending at the Hoosier Hills Fiber Festival in uh, Franklin, Indiana, which is um, just a little south of Indianapolis. Um, hmm, when is that? I think it's June 4th and 5th. I think it's the 4th and 5th. Yeah, pretty sure it's the 4th and 5th, which is a Friday, Saturday that first weekend in, in June. Anyway, so um, my friend Lauren, who is coming, is also going to help me vend there. So I'm going to enlist her aid in packing, um, like the suitcases and things that, that I take. Because I've learned that taking boxes is um, really hard on my back, but taking suitcases is much easier. So I just pack big suitcases and take those with me. Um, anyway, just some quick reminders. Of course, we are still in the year of self-care, and if you haven't posted, um, please post and tag Black Sheep Fiber Emporium so that we know that you are playing along with our year of self-care. And do remember that uh, that year of self-care kind of applies to everything. So um, any, any needlework, uh, it all counts, even if it isn't the, what is this month's theme again? Um, little indulgences, small things. Um, still counts, still counts. So go ahead and play along. Just make sure that you are tagging us so we know that you are playing. Um, my my amber shuttles haven't come yet. I'm waiting on them. I keep hoping that they're going to show up, um, but they haven't come yet. So I'm just I'm just waiting at this point. Um, but when they do, I will, I will show them to you because I've now seen pictures from some of the other people in the group um, on Facebook that ordered them from the same guy and they are gorgeous. <laughs> they are gorgeous. And I really want my two shuttles to come. Um, anyway, and then what else have I got going on? Uh, I still have way too many tomato plants and peppers, even though I took, I took uh, like 20, at least 20, and got rid of them this weekend with friends. And I'm taking another like half dozen plus and um, getting rid of them tomorrow with more friends. And, and yet I just... Um, I do not know why I feel such a need to start so many tomato plants every year, but I do. And then I end up with so many and I just give them away to my friends and my family. Um, which I mean, I guess they appreciate it, so that's nice. And hi Angelus, nice to see you again. So anyway, today we are doing um, beads and tatting, so here's my, my little my little dab of tatting that we'll be working with. And I have, this is the Olympus. This is the large Olympus. It's nice stuff, like super nice stuff. Um, so we will be working with that momentarily. Oh, look, I made a t-shirt for myself. So there we go. It's dinosaurs and flowers. So um, yeah, just, just wanted to show you that because I made my shirt um, since last week we were doing sewing and I made a shirt for Ina. I made a shirt for me. I actually made three shirts for me. Um, because I made the first one and it was pretty comfortable and then I was tweaking the pattern so I made three of them and now I know exactly what I like and I actually have fabric laid out, fabric laid out downstairs so I can make another one for me because it's very comfortable and, and it's fabric that I like and it's a cut that I like and 
So yeah, I'm just gonna make my own shirts for now. We'll see what happens with that. Um, not that I won't ever buy another, you know, like retail shirt again, just I'm kind of liking it, so that's what I'm doing. Um, anyway, so this is kind of the plan, at least today, is we're going to do beads and tatting. Wednesday, we're going to be back with the weaving, and my goodness, I, I did, like I said, spend some time trying to, um, trying to get the weaving done. I'm really hoping that I'll have it finished by Wednesday, but uh, no guarantees. I think I've still got like 24 inches of warp left. It's a lot. Like, I've got a lot of warp left. Um, I apparently, like, just went to town and I um, managed to, like, make a giant warp. That's, that's my only excuse, is it was just like a giant warp. And I haven't been working on it because I was working on slow crawl, but I finally have most of the slow crawl stuff done. Um, I have two patterns left to sort of put up on um, the websites and, and get ready for slow crawl. So we are this close, this close. Uh, if you haven't purchased your passport, we do have them available. Um, I have to put the link, link up from Black Sheep, but we do sell them through Black Sheep. And we also sell them at that slowcrawl.com because we are the people who run that. Uh, so you can just buy it there and that works too. What else do I need to tell you? Um, Tina's doing her morning coffees, so she's not doing her Friday afternoon uh, chats anymore. I am still here though on Mondays and Wednesdays, so you can still find me on Mondays and Wednesdays. Um, next Monday, what should we do next Monday? Next Monday, let's do, uh, let's do knotted lace again, only because I want to show you what I'm working on. And then, um, the Monday after that, let's do some knitting. And then I think Wednesdays I'm going to start, um, alternating between weaving, uh, spinning and sewing. So we'll do weaving, spinning and sewing. And it'll either be hand embroidery or it will be, um, sewing downstairs. So it'll be some kind of sewing on Wednesdays. We're going to alternate those three things, uh, kind of for the next few months and see how that goes again at 3:30. So I moved the time. We'll be at 3:30 now instead of three central. Uh, that's 1:30 Pacific, 4:30 Eastern, 2:30 Mountain, depending on where you're coming from. Um, I can only do those four. So otherwise, look it up. Sorry. Um, anyway, so that's kind of the plan. Is uh, I'm going to sort of alternate that on uh, Wednesdays. Mondays I'm going to try to keep to more uh, lace topics. So we're going to do tatting, Mediterranean knotted lace, and knitted lace on Mondays. Um, and then we'll throw in whatever else uh, we decide we want to do on Mondays. So that'll be fun. And if you have ideas, just let me know. I'm always up for swapping out a Monday if we need to do that. All right, so let's get into the nitty gritty today of what we are doing. I'm going to flip my camera around and point it down and then hopefully you can watch my hands and everything will be hunky dory. And hopefully this wasp will go away because it's currently right above me. That is a hazard of being outside, especially here. So, Yeah, sorry Tamara, I had to move uh, my time because Ina has decided that she doesn't want to sleep now. <laughs> and so I have to fight her to get her to sleep by three so that I can um, do my videos at 3.30. That's a brand new thing, I just changed it. Um, just, just, just changed it, just changed it. Um, so sorry about that, sorry that you were waiting. It's just one of those, one of those things that happened. All right, so hopefully now, this could be a little bit better. Let me turn this. Hmm? There we go. All right. Hopefully, you guys can watch, watch me while I work. Let me get a little bit closer. Yeah, sorry about that, Tamara. Yeah, sorry about that, sorry about that, you know. Well, if you miss it, I do try to put it up on YouTube, although sometimes it takes me a few days because I forget. Um, so this is the Olympus. I really like this stuff. Um, it's tighter twist and not quite as soft as DMC, but it's a little softer twist and not quite as harsh as Lizbeth. And I think the definition is still really nice. Um, this is just a little demonstration piece that I've been making showing how to put 
beads in different places. So we're going to talk about um, bead placement today when it comes to tatting. And um, when you see the bead on the outside edge, like this one, where the thread is running through the center, so both of these are the same. These are um, either pre-strung and you set them in your hand, meaning it's in your hand and in your ring and waiting to be put into place or it's been pre-strung on your chain same idea so that it's waiting to be strung into place um, when you see a thread running over the top of your bead that means that it is on your shuttle but it is outside of your ring so it's it's out here it's waiting to be placed but it will have a thread over the top of it just the nature of, of placement of the beads and then the third one that i'm going to show you is this one and this one is a bead over a connecting pico so this one you actually use the hook on your shuttle to set so I just keep my beads in, uh, well it doesn't have to be on your shuttle, you just use a, a hook to set it. But um, you can keep your little beads in a container and then you have your hook and you can pull your Pico through and pop that on top. Um, that's also a great way to set beads in knitting. I'll just mention that now. So let's talk, um, let's talk, we'll do a chain here. So I've already done two rings. So when we get ready to make a piece with beads when, it, when we're tatting, if we are putting the beads inside the rings or on the chains at all, we have to pre-string our beads. If we are only putting the beads over a joining pico, then we don't have to pre-string anything. So that's the, the first thing that you have to establish is... Um, how many beads do you need? How big is your motif? Uh, you know, how many beads are going on chains? How many beads are going on rings? Because you do have to pre-string them. So there's a little more math involved. You have to think about it a little more. All right, let's do this one. So the first one is if we want to use a bead in place of a pico, and you have to have this pre-strung. When it's on the chain, it's just hanging out on the ball thread, so there's just beads hanging out down there. And you slide your bead into place and tat it, just like it would be a pico. So that's, that's all there is. You slide it into place, it takes the place of a pico. If it was a little smaller bead, it would look a little bit better in this, but these were nice big beads and they were easy to see and they were on top. So this is what I've been using. Um, so that's the first one is if you are using a bead to replace a pico. Now the next one is if you are wanting to set a bead in your uh, chain itself. So this one's setting a bead in the chain itself you will take it off of your shuttle because this is a chain and move it into place and then you would just tat like normal but you'll notice that with a pico the bead sits on the thread and doesn't have another thread around it with the bead inside the chain it sits on the chain but now it has the uh, thread around it from what would have been a pico because it's the space between two stitches so that's the difference between those two same idea for uh, rings but let me show you a bead on a join because I have a handy pico right here so with a bead on a join right hang on they bead on a join you are going to identify whichever pico you're going to use so we're going to use this pico here and grab a hook of some sort 
because you are going to hook your bead on, hook your pico, and then slide the bead over the pico, and then comes the tricky part, because of course you always want your pico just so long. And then we are going to take that hook, come on, pico, ha, ah, and pop it through the pico, and you will join as normal. So we're gonna join as normal, bring this up, like this, join as normal. And this will set the bead over the pico, so the bead kind of free floats but is locked in place and can't go anywhere, just like if you had tatted it into the piece. Okay, and now I forgot to put a bead in here, but that's okay. So I can show you putting the bead in place in the middle of a ring, at least. So same idea on a ring, you would pop it from the shuttle and Put it in place just like you would between two stitches but again you'll notice that you're going to have that thread over the top of your bead and I cannot put a bead in in place of a pico on this ring because I didn't add a bead to the ring before I started so that is the difference right there you have to add however many beads to your ring that you plan to use there we go. So if I want a bead in, in place of a pico, I have to add however many I'm going to use to my ring before I make my ring. Because if I wait until after, then it won't work. And then you just kind of have to keep them back out of the way while you start your piece. demo piece. It's kind of a funky little demo piece too. I do like the beads with this thread, even though they're a little bit big. Okay, and then you would bring your bead up and put it in place of your pico and then tat as normal. And then let's say that I want to do one more. Bring it up into place and you're going to tat your bead in place and tat as normal just like this so that's that's the difference it's just three different um, placements that results in three different looks so these are beads that were on the ring that we added to the ring before we closed it to start this one was added from the shuttle after we'd started the ring this one is over a pico and then the same thing here. So that's my little demo piece. And hopefully, if you haven't played with beads yet, it gave you an idea of um, what you can do and how to do it. So tatting with beads is not hard. Um, it can require math. If you have to you know, pre-string your beads, you may have to pre-string a couple hundred if you're doing a big piece. Um, but, well, I have everybody out here. I have been working on my knotted lace and I've been working on cleaning off some tatting shuttles. So this is the piece that I'm currently working on and it's a little bit ruffly because I am still working to add uh, more rounds to help uh, flatten it out. This is size 80 <laughs> Lizbeth thread that I had left over on two shuttles and it had been on those shuttles for years because I just hadn't done anything with it and I decided it was time to do something and make something and get it off my shuttles. So I am playing with the knotted lace with this. This is another one that I had started um, with again, some like leftover thread off of a tatting shuttle. And I really like how this one's going. So I went ahead and I put a removable, um, well this isn't a stitch marker, but just a little safety pin in here so that I know where the start of my round is. And I went ahead and dug out the thread that I um, used for this, this color. And this is uh, 40, I think. Let me double check. Pretty sure it's 40, isn't it? Yes, it is size 40. So that's some size 40. And I'm going to keep going with this one 
uh, with this Mediterranean knotted lace piece. I'm going to keep going with it. I just kind of switched to this one so that I could clean off my shuttles. But I, I kind of know where I went wrong. There's another piece I did. Because I should have put another round of um, basic loops in before I did this increase round where I was doing two loops in each loop. So I doubled my stitch count and it made it just a little bit more ruffly than I thought it would. So now I have to, uh, I've got to keep going with a lot of basic loops to help round this out so that it will lay a little flatter. I think eventually I can get it to where it will lay flat. It's just going to take some, some work, which is fine. Anyway, and that's that size 80 Lizbeth. And we do carry this Lizbeth uh, in size 80, 40, and 10 in the shop if you happen to be looking for any. Um, there's another little piece that I finished that I was cleaning off my shuttles. So I just kind of made up the pattern. Um, I have been using three different books for inspiration um, for my little pieces, but I've mostly been just winging it. <laughs> The only one that I followed a pattern on a uh, Cheryl was this one and this one is um, which one is this one this one is mm, I think this is the second Mediterranean knotted lace book um, by Elena Dixon um, I have her Babila book but I haven't done much of that yet I'll be switching to flowers soon I'm just trying to like practice my lace first um, because I decided that, you know, that's that's where I wanted to start. So here's all my pieces, uh, kind of in order. So this was the first one I did, and it has clearly has some issues. This one is better. This one I did um, after that one, and then this piece, and then this piece. And you can see that I'm getting better. I'm getting um, tighter knots. I'm getting more consistent with my uh, loops as I go on and um, once I once I kind of get through these and decide whatever I'm going to do with them I'm, I plan to go back to this gorgeous Olympus this is the Olympus medium and I am going to play with some Olympus medium because I think that it is going to be super nice um, and I've kind of had some ideas about ways to use the Mediterranean knotted lace to make more 3D things because I can see a lot of potential especially with um, especially with the ruffling that this one's kind of doing um, I honestly thought about like stitching three points together and sort of making a little interesting 3D cupped thing but I decided I'm gonna keep going and, and keep practicing my loops so, um, but I can see a lot of potential for these in terms of like making 3D um, items like a cat or a sheep or a box or I don't know. I just, there's, I see potential in these anyway. And I know this, and I keep, I don't hate that this one's ruffly. It's just kind of different. It wasn't really what I anticipated was going to happen. But anyway, I thought while we're, checking out some of the some of the things that you can do with Olympus thread and tatting that I would show you uh, some of the things that I've been doing with the Lizbeth and um, and I have like some of my old work in here too my like really old work that I started with Elena years and years ago now um, but like here's a little doily that I started many years ago um, and it was great practice. I'm, I'm glad that I did it at the time. Um, I definitely need to keep practicing. Here's, uh, here's one that I did that was much better. Um, although I discolored the center somehow. And then here was, uh, here's one that starts with long loops. So these two start with long loops instead of having the little, uh, basic loops. And this one is out of the the Olympus, and I really think it's pretty. So I I, I want to go back and like keep playing with these. Um, and the cool part is I am using a um, a sashiko needle, and 
and Lizbeth thread, and that's pretty much it. Like, that's all it really takes is just, um, is thread and a needle. So it's very, very portable. It's, I was actually doing this at the rabbit show this weekend. Um, just kind of playing around with stuff. So anyway, I'm going to take Victoria Ong's beginners class, um, from the IOLI conference. They actually had to I, so I was going to take the intermediate class. I'm still taking her intermediate class. Uh oh, I don't want these all to blow away. Um, no, 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 no. No blowing away. Um, but there were only two of us who signed up for the intermediate class, and there were a bunch of people that wanted to take the beginner's class. So um, I'm going to take the intermediate class, but it will be in August um, with my friend Natalie. I bet she doesn't even watch this, but... Um, I'm going to call her my friend because I really like Natalie and, um, she was a lot of fun at the Shuttlebirds, um, workshop in Idaho, which hopefully we will get to do next year now, uh, since they couldn't do it again this year. But, um, we are planning to do the intermediate class and then I went ahead and signed up for the beginners class, not because I don't know how to do the knotted lace, but because I was just curious to see um, what it is that Victoria teaches differently than what Elena teaches, because I always like to see how people teach things differently. And this, this little guy right here, um, I embroidered, uh, several years ago now when I was out in Oregon. I think this is Abe or Abel, maybe. And it's a little mouse in a hot air balloon. And I thought that it was, um, just a really cute little design. And I didn't do a very good job, but I just wanted to show you this because this is proof that you can get better if you keep practicing. So it's really important to keep some of those early works around because you get better as you keep practicing. Anyway, so I just thought I'd throw that out there too. All right. So let me pick this up and turn it around. And... Uh, All right, there we go. Okay, so hopefully my little tutorial today helped you if you were uh, thinking of tatting and adding beads to your tatting or um, if you were thinking of doing some Mediterranean knotted lace, maybe I intrigued you. I am trying to teach myself and become proficient enough that I can put a class together, um, an online class in um, knotted lace, beginners, Mediterranean knotted lace, which again is part of why I want to take Victoria's class. I want to see how she teaches it versus how Elena teaches it so I can get ideas for how I would teach it. Um, so that's, I mean, that's kind of where I'm headed is, is putting together a class. I do have a class, um, up that, uh, no one's signed up for yet in beginning tatting. So if you want to learn beginner shuttle tatting, I am teaching that next month. Uh, so that is coming up and it is available and I do need to add more classes uh, to the roster. So what what would you want me to teach? I guess that's my question is what, what do you want me to teach? Because um, some of my classes have been popular and they've sold out. Some of them haven't run because I haven't had any students. So I, I'm just asking you guys, what would you want to see? What would you like me to teach? I can do cables, lace, color work. Uh, socks, mittens, mitts, cowls, shawls, um, you know, beginners tatting. I, I ran and I tried to run an intermediate course, Cheryl, but nobody uh, signed up for that either. Um, so an intermediate course in tatting. Um, I, we could always do like a, uh, a project. I could do a tatting project where we, you know, learn techniques together. So that's always an option. Um, yeah, I'm trying to I'm trying to become proficient enough that I could teach a beginner's Mediterranean knotted lace. Um, I don't know. I don't know. There's all kinds of things to teach. Tina usually does the beginning knitting and the beginning crochet. Um, yeah, I don't know. I don't know. I just keep trying to find things to teach because it's fun. And I'm super sleepy because um, I've been just working to get my house like all cleaned up today um i mean i'm not gonna get the whole house done but like you know i did the kitchen floor and the counters and the sink and uh 
you know, got all my dishes washed and in the dishwasher if they weren't washed. Um, and I washed my sheets and I cleaned the bathroom where the cat has his litter box and cleaned his litter box and cleaned his bowls and, you know, just all that stuff that you have to do. There's so many things. There's so many things. I cleaned my shower while I was taking a shower. Um, <laughs> what else did I do? I don't even know. It's just, it's, so yeah, I was doing a lot of cleaning today. Um, and I, you know, I ran the water this morning, but I forgot to water the plants on the deck. So I'm going to have to water the plants on the deck tonight really well because they're looking a little droopy. Not terrible, just a little droopy. Um, what else did we do? I don't know. Ina, yesterday, Ina helped me, um, helped me to break apart an aloe plant. So I bought one aloe plant and it took off and, and now I have like, Mm, three main aloe plants and they throw off babies all the time and so I end up with like 20 aloe plants or more every year and so then I have to give away aloe plants too because uh, I have too many aloe plants I just uh, I'm not exactly a green thumb but there's a few things that I grow that I can just grow um, so she helped me to split all of the aloes and put them in their own individual pots yesterday and then she helped me water all the plants on the porch uh, so I've been trying to teach her all of those things um, and then we sort of sorted and reorganized some of her toys and we took more of them downstairs because I want to start taking Ina downstairs more where I have my loom and my sewing machines so that I can get more weaving and sewing done with her uh, and she has her toys to play with downstairs. So anyway, that's the plan on that. Um, which is part of why like I was, I was weaving for a while today. And I'm going to go back down and try to get another chunk woven and and I really really want to get that uh, warp off my loom on Wednesday so we can talk about hemming and we can take a look at any mistakes that I made and what I could have done to prevent them and then also um, I want to talk about uh, like cutting and hemming your hand woven fabric um, so like there's a whole bunch of stuff that I want to talk about I just I have to get it woven I just I don't know, I made this warp like super long. I didn't think I made it that long. Apparently I made it, I just, I made it super long. But anyway, so I will um, try to get more of my events up so that you know kind of what the schedule is going to be from now on. Um, like I said, Wednesdays I'm going to alternate between uh, weaving, spinning, and sewing. And then we'll do weaving, spinning, sewing. And the sewing will be one of two things. We'll either be downstairs and I'll be talking about um, putting patterns together and making garments or I'll be upstairs and um, we'll be doing hand embroidery so it kind of gives me you know a little bit of leeway there and then Mondays uh, like I said I'm gonna kind of focus on lace for a little while so we'll be rotating between tatting uh, Mediterranean knotted lace and knitted lace um, because those are the three that I those are the three that I do um, and and hopefully we'll have fun with that but if there is something that you want me to talk about or teach let me know because i am always happy to swap out a monday or a wednesday if i have a good subject so um anyway and 3 30s from now on instead of three o'clock because i'm trying to work with ina's schedule and i i like to do my videos without a lot of interruption and she's not terrible but you know if i can focus on you guys for a half an hour to 45 minutes it does make my day just that little bit better um so anyway yeah, make sure that you're doing your year of self-care. Remember, Tina is not doing her Friday afternoon videos because she is putting up her morning coffee with Tina videos on YouTube instead. So make sure that you have uh, followed us on YouTube or Facebook, that you follow our Instagram channel. We do put up all kinds of stuff. Uh, TikTok I have been completely neglecting, and I really need to um, work on some small videos on, uh, I think the Mediterranean Knotted Lace would be a good one next. Um, but I, I like doing the little how-to videos, the little one-minute how-to videos and, and adding those to TikTok. Um, it gives me a lot of, of things to talk about. So um, anyway, I do need to get back to that. I really do. Uh, but I am going to go make a coffee and try to wake up and, um, and see what's next on my list of things to clean and do. I have to sort baby bunnies tonight as well because it's time to... Um, it's time to, time to take some baby bunnies away because I have too many baby bunnies again. And uh, I know that'll break some people's hearts here, but uh, yeah, they, they go to cull. So they go for food for other animals because everybody has to eat. So everybody has to eat. Uh, and that's what I raise a lot of my bunnies for is food for other animals. So um, anyway, 
yeah, lots of fun stuff going on. Um, let's see, slow crawl starts Friday. So if you don't have your passport, make sure you grab one. Um, but it's okay if you're a little bit late starting it because the slow crawl is a slow crawl. So it takes three, it, I shouldn't say it takes, it lasts three months. So you have plenty of time to do the slow crawl. If you're in the Pacific Northwest, you can crawl in person. Uh, every shop that you visit has at least one pattern. Um, about half of them have two that you get free just for visiting and getting your passport stamped because you already paid for your passport and that's your ticket to all of the free patterns. Um, if you are crawling online, we do ask that you make a purchase in order to get your patterns just because it's hard to, uh, it's hard to justify it otherwise, basically. Um, if we know that you've been to the shop if you've gone on and you've made a purchase, even if it's a small purchase, you'll still get, um, your patterns for free you just have to tell them that you are a slow crawler and then you can download them either through Ravelry or the slow crawl website and uh, some of our shops have also put them up on their uh, private websites so you've got at least two if not three different ways that you can get your patterns we do try to be as inclusive as possible when it comes to uh, the patterns which is why we try to have plenty of knit and crochet patterns um, anyway we try. We're trying. We're trying harder every year. We're really encouraging our shops to make sure that they do a knit and a crochet pattern. And if you know any pattern designers, especially crochet pattern designers, and you want to pass their names along to me, please email me. Um, for that, just send it to slowyarncrawl at gmail.com, or you can send it to my Kelly at blacksheepatorenco.com, because it will help me immensely if you have crochet designer friends that I can send the name along to my shop so that they have you know someone that they can talk to anyway um until wednesday when we do a little more weaving i will uh see you then please take care of yourself what do i always say mentally physically spiritually emotionally craftually whatever you need to do to take care of yourself please take care of yourself so that you can keep joining me for my live videos tell your friends about the live videos tell them that i put them up on youtube so they can check them out there if they'd rather do that um we are we are trying to grow our audience um, and help people find more fun stuff because we love sharing our fun stuff and our knowledge with all of you. So until next time, take care, be safe, and keep crafting. Keep crafting. All right. I'll see you Wednesday.